что на самом деле произошло, когда погибла царская семья Николая What really happened when the royal family of Nikolai II died? Is there any ritualistic meaning in it? Yes, certainly. It was a ritual, a ritual of murdering the royal blood. Anyone can have all sorts of attitudes towards Nikolai, or towards the whole Romanov bloodline, towards all this monarchy, especially people who for generations already have been raised without praising the blue bloods and other privileged classes. In the country of the victorious Soviets, all people were equal, and the servitude, as we all remember, was abolished in 1917. Therefore, the attitude towards Nikolai II, as a monarch, was the way it was. Then, of course, they started to revive his memory, his remains were discovered, and transformed into relics. Well, it was pretty convenient. But the actual meaning of their murder had different reasons. The thing is that every representative of the royal blood, especially if the bloodline extends from far along, is the carrier of an agreement, we can even say. He is the keeper of the agreement between the gods and the earth. Such an agreement is always sealed through someone who is alive. And this living person becomes a ruler, meaning that he guarantees that this agreement will be carried out between the cosmic forces, roughly speaking, and the earthly ones. The cosmic forces, cosmic gods, so to say, gods of information, creator gods and ruler gods are here to implement certain civilizational projects and each has a project of their own. The earth allocates resources for this purpose and provides time for it and these people with a ruler status must follow this agreement. After many years, and perhaps even centuries of endless inbreeding, crossbreeding with each other, it's obvious that their line degenerated, and by a certain point they began to resemble rather clown-like characters, but only from an outside point of view. At the same time, they still remain the keepers of the agreement, just like the Titans, they are the pillars that support the system. Anything whatsoever can happen within this system. Wars, cataclysms, disasters, low or high birth rates, anything at all. But the system itself will keep on getting restored, as long as representatives of such blood exist. But if even a few of the pillars of this temple get chopped down, then the roof will start tipping sideways. At the beginning of the 20th century, several murders of such kind were performed. One of them was Prince Archduke Franz Ferdinand. The other was Nikolai Romanov together with his family, and a few other pillars, but of lesser importance. Not all of them, of course, and some of their responsibilities were shared among other bloodlines, the Windsors, for instance. But those pillars were jeopardized, so that the system that was relying on them would fall apart. In order to be able to create another system in its place, to establish a new agreement, Vladimir Ulyanov Lenin was exactly the one to become the carrier of such an agreement. This is why, as you understand it, he is not being buried. In order to perform a sacrifice, certain rules should be followed, and that is what was done. In both cases, these were the cruel murders, and all of the deaths were dedicated to something, meaning that in the moment of making a sacrifice, it was done in honor of someone, a particular force, a certain deity. The more ancient the blood, the richer the blood, 
the more it is saturated with all these informational aspects of the agreement, an ancient agreement between the sky and the earth, the greater the sacrifice, the greater is the effect. Usually, these types of rituals are customary in black magic ceremonies, because a black magic ceremony, firstly, always requires a blood sacrifice, and secondly, it always has a designated time frame, just like the former agreement with the rulers, although the latter usually has a shorter time frame. It is a hundred-year-long agreement, almost as if selling one's soul to the devil. According to the legend, the poet and artist by the name of Schickelgruber made an agreement with the devil to last 13 years, and so for those 13 years he became known as Hitler. And once it was over, then say goodbye, the agreement has ended. This pertains to any artificial system, it's the same there. If in a case of a normal agreement between gods and the earth, they get one aeon, meaning 2150 years, then a human project gets much less time. And in order to infiltrate an already established agreement, a series of crimes would be necessary. Those crimes are always drenched in blood since the blood is sacred, and it usually speaks for itself. It is considered sacred, not because it's somewhat better, no, it's just that this blood is a carrier of the agreement. This agreement is contained within the bones, it lives in the internal organs, it is encoded in the DNA. Those norms can only be described from a metaphysical point of view, and in no other way. And I hope, colleagues, that you understand what I am talking about. It truly caused a great amount of surprise in modern-day folks and in their descendants. How could it be that the worst of all living, a worthless, incapable person, is holding such a high place? And some of those members of the European royal families were riddled with the wildest defects, such as severe schizophrenia and all possible deformities that can occur due to constant and prolonged incest. But, nonetheless, in spite of everything mentioned above, they were the ones who carried that agreement. But, nonetheless, 